because I was a fat person, I had to agree with what everybody said. You are a pathetic, no-life sham. A drug abuser, you have a criminal past. Has anybody taken that puppet and shoved it where the sun doesn't shine? Did you fart? And now, here's your host of the award-winning talk soup, Greg Cunning! Oh, yeah! Pretending we're a really big show, even though we know that you know that we know that you know it's only the weekend edition of Talk Soup. Greg Kinnear back with you checking out highlights of the talk shows, or at least the ones that matter. I believe, oh yes, the fever is broken, John. I'm back, a little clogged up, but we're going to make it through the show. Hope you're having a great weekend. Coming up a little bit later on, we'll be using the phone to call Tammy Faye. Also, Dolores explains why hooking is fun. Jennifer cheerfully puts her mom, what, thousands of dollars in debt? And Officer Bob hits the streets with his fearless wooden companion, Brendan O'Smarty. That's right. But first, go ahead. Hate her because she's beautiful. Diane DeWitt doesn't care. After all, she, she knows how to avoid pre-party makeup madness. How can I, too, acquire this valuable knowledge, is what you're asking yourself as we show you this clip right now. Good news, folks. All you got to do is check out this highlight from GMA. Chamomile and fruit teas are my favorites. There's something so soothing about the ritual of sipping tea. Ah, next, I like to pamper myself with some peppermint foot lotion. The tingling feeling of the peppermint really wakes up my tired, sore feet. Next, rejuvenate your existing makeup with a little moisture. Take a plastic spray bottle and fill it with spring water and give my face a light spritz. Blot it with a tissue. Then I blend away the excess foundation and get rid of those tiny lines. Next, I use a combination powder foundation with a brush to even out my skin before applying blush. So, what to do with this hair? Steamrollers. When I'm finished here, all I'll have to do is get dressed. Start with your hose and always have an extra pair on hand in case of a last-minute run. Know what you want to wear in advance. It really helps keep the stress level to a minimum. Pick a pair of earrings that make the most of your hairstyle and your dress. Diane? Wow, you look great. Come on, honey, let's go. This is for him. See you at the party. No. I'll see you. <laughs> Don't forget Diane's motto, kids. Clothes, makeup, and hair in less than an hour to spare. She's a little bit of a poet, too. Sadly, the young couple didn't make it to the party and believe we have some footage of their car shortly before the... Oh, no. On Good Morning America Monday... Tom Hanks will be talking about his role in what's supposed to be quite a film. Philadelphia he plays a man suffering from AIDS in that gripping courtroom drama. He'll be on GMA Monday. Have you ever wondered to yourself, why does Glenn walk so funny? The fact is, this overzealous neat freak prefers extra starch in his skivvies, folks. He also likes them pressed as smooth as glass, so he can feel fresh and crisp all under. Is this guy for real, you may be wondering? Probably not, but that's what makes him an ideal guest for the Bertice Berry Show. Can you iron your underwear? <laughs> <laughs> Don't mean to set you up. I, I have my, my linens pressed. I have my... <laughs> Someone wants to know if it starts too. Yeah. I got this thing when my underwear come out of the dryer, they tend to look old and crinkled up. So if you press them, they look like they just came out of the package and they look new again. <laughs> so I have them pressed. Yeah. I, someone wants to know who's going to see them. Well, <laughs> <laughs> what is it? Why, why does that just have to be? I mean, does everything have to be so orderly for you? I'm just a very organized person and, and I like things tidy and neat and clean and it's just something I've been doing for years and uh, feel better about it, I guess. Okay. 
Does it help in, in, in business as well to be that organized? Yeah, I think days that my um, underwear and press, I have uh, bad... bad <laughs> women, women have bad hair day. I have a bad underwear day. I'm not sure I want to know what a bad underwear day is. Uh, well, apparently the man keeps his hangers spaced exactly one and a half inches apart. Just so you know. On Monday's show, Bertice hears from parents and the teenage kids they just can't seem to control adolescent angst. Monday. Well, what's a little nude hide-and-seek between friends? Well, a little bit more than friends, actually. The truth is, Jamie and Diane are ex-sweethearts. And like many old-time acquaintances, occasionally they get together, strip off all their clothes, and run naked through a cemetery. As natural as this may sound to you and me, Jamie's wife, Tanya, was a bit concerned by his latest rendezvous. She and Diane decided to talk things out on the Jenny Jones Show. I mean, this is a guy that you were planning to marry, planning to have a family with, and he's gone. Mm -hmm. He's gone. Do you want him back? No. Probably asked the same thing I was going to ask. Then why, yeah, well, why, why nude hide and seek? <laughs> okay, explanation. We're friends. I want to be friends. Yeah, but Tanya, if you're friends, you don't play nude hide and seek. In a How do you know? Well, he's my friend. He's like my big brother. Okay. We well, don't play nude hide and seek. I would rather hear. I would rather hear my boyfriend tell me. I would rather hear my boyfriend tell me that he was naked with somebody than hear my boyfriend say, "Oh, somebody's pregnant." And he, I'm going to marry her, and I love her more than I love you. I love her for the baby. And my mom likes her more than I like you. Okay? Are you saying it was not a sexual thing? No. Nude hide-and-seek? No. It was not sexual? No. <laughs> yeah. Had they been doing nude hedge trimming now, that's, that's a whole other thing, my friends. But this was just nude hide-and-seek. Diane swears she has no designs on Jamie. In fact, she has a new boyfriend. Jamie, on the other hand admits that he is still, in fact, in love with Diane, thus the nude hide-and-seek in the cemetery. By the way, his wife, Tanya, is pregnant again. On Jenny's show... Thanks. On Jenny's show Monday, meet a man who bulldozed his girlfriend's house to the ground all because she locked him outside. That'll learn you. Jimmy's mouth is a black hole devouring anything and everything that gets in its path. Thank you. Thank you, Richie. Food, cat food, goldfish, small children. The man should be stopped, my friends, or at the very least, he should become a guest on the Richard Bay Show, which he did. Ladies and gentlemen, introducing Jimmy, the human garbage disposal. All right, please welcome Jimmy Dio. Hey, Richard, I don't know people are asking. Is that a live goldfish? There is a goldfish in there. <laughs> dog food, can I see that for a minute? Yeah. That is actually dog food. I can smell it from here. Oh. What is that, cat food? I'm wearing cat food. All right. Hold on. Hold on for one second. How does it taste? Mm. It tastes good. Can I tell you this? Where can you utilize a talent like this? <laughs> That's a, this is Bay Show. On the Richard Bay Show, yes, I know. Now, what's the last thing you do? <laughs> Drinking beer off of your forehead. Well, thank you very much. You were fun. <laughs> Is there anything more disgusting than little pieces of Alpo in a man's beard? <laughs> Apparently the man doesn't worry about bad breath after his act. He chomps down a few urinal pucks and he says he's fresh as his daisy. A little bit later on, this gentleman came out who blows corn chips out of his ear. Do they shoot actually out of your ears or you swat them or what do you do? Okay, over the top, look, watch closely, his corn chips. Whoa! Absolutely incredible. Wow. I love talent. Monday, Richard will be hearing from mothers with problem kids and friends who feel these moms are doing a lousy job parenting. We'll take a break and be back with a teenage girl who gives birth to her stepfather's baby and a peppy prostitute gets her kicks.
turning tricks. Next. Seven. We're back. It is time for the Talk Soup Quote of the Week, my friends. Well, as it turns out, the Quote of the Week is brought to you by Tyrone Williams Fig Garden, your one-stop fig store. This week's quote comes from the Maury Povich Show. It features Bill, a guy who talked about how his wife's weight loss has had an interesting side effect. Well, Cindy uh, definitely has lost weight, and she grew balls. Talk to you for the week. Tyrone's Fig Garden? To hear Dolores talk, hooking ranks right up there with lawn bowling, stamp collecting, nose hair, macrame. But the fact is, her hobby of choice is also a highly lucrative and illegal profession. Details, details, details. As Shirley and her audience learned, Dolores is the happiest hooker in the whole Western Hemisphere, and here she is now. You're a call girl for the Bucks, but it's not. You enjoy your job. Oh, I right? really enjoy it. And, uh... <laughs> I... Yes, I really enjoy it. But, uh, and, and, and people can make a lot of money doing a lot of things. And I think that the key to success, or what makes a successful life, is finding something that you're happy doing. So you go to work every day and you like it. Oh, I love it. And okay. I love anticipating, and I love all the things that go along with it. I love, I love the people that I deal with. I love the clothing. I love the costumes. I love the lingerie. You know, the whole... Uh, it's fun, you know, it, it's uh, p picking out something that's a hobby and turning it into a profession and still loving, it's wonderful. Now, we're not talking about needlepoint here, Dolores. She's a hooking purist, ladies and gentlemen. She used to be a madame, but she gave that up so she could devote herself solely to the profession of selling sex for cash. On Shirley's show this Tuesday, do men have any rights when they help conceive a child and the potential mom wants an abortion? That'll be discussed Tuesday on The Shirley Show. Kathy's 11-month-old boy, Zach, is hes going to be a little confused when he gets older and starts scrutinizing the family photo albums. He's likely to ask questions like, Hey, Mom, why do you have this shot of Sis and me in the labor room? Fact is, Zach was conceived with his stepfather's sperm. This is true. Conceived with his stepfather's sperm and carried in the womb of his sister, Amy. Is this a perfect topic for the Jenny Jones Show or what? Take a look. Kathy, I wanted to ask you where your morals are. I mean, that's truly, truly morals and truly a religious kind of a, a is belief. It, is it because she... Well, let me answer that. I think he's saying that because you, you basically st stole your husband's sperm for your daughter to have this baby because let you didn't tell that, him. Okay? I think that's why you're saying that. I think when you get desperate, I think when you get hurt, you're going to do it. There's going to be some way that you're going to do it. You're going to go see if you could adopt a baby. But if you don't have money, you can't afford it. And this was a baby that my husband is a father. If I, if I didn't have any more else, I could have sent him out on the streets to go get a baby somewhere else. I didn't. I chose to have the baby with my daughter's egg, my husband's sperm. And from that, we have a beautiful son. Would you want to do it again? Yes, we're going to do it again. Oh. <laughs> Does Brian... Do you know that, Brian? That's news to me. <laughs> Last man you saw there is Amy's husband, Brian. Kathy says next time around she intends to use a legal surrogate on Jenny Jones' show this Tuesday. It's an in-depth look at the John Wayne Bobbitt story. Just thinking about this case is enough to make most men break out in a cold sweat. This will be discussed Tuesday, Jenny Jones. We'll take a break and be back. She's 260 pounds of potato chip munching fun, plus the Dallas Cowboy cheerleaders whoop it up on Montel Show next. We're back. This is Talk Soup. I missed the big E Christmas party last night, and I am catching a lot of heat for it, even for my little friend, John Esposito, who was not there last year, and I was. I was racked up with 106 fever, and they still won't get off my case about this, friends. In fact, I'm still warm. <laughs> Getting in shape means uh, different things to different people. I would have gone otherwise. 
While Jane and Fonda is doing aerobics, Wanda is scrounging for crumbs at the bottoms of old Doritos bags. While Richard Simmons is sweating to the oldies, Wanda is scarfing down fried pork rinds. And while Sugar Ray Leonard is shadow boxing, Wanda is slurping down the last of a cherry slurpee. This guest from the Richard Bay Show, my friends, is big, she's bountiful, and she's damn proud of it. Oh, all right, Wanda. You're five foot eight, you weigh 260 pounds, you eat whatever you want. Child, look at this meat. Yeah. What would a man do without all his meat? Wanda, 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 we couldn't miss you. We couldn't miss you, so you don't Thank have to show you. us. But do you think that you are happier like this than these people are who are I'm happier and healthier, Richard. I don't have to oh. eat fruit. Apples and oranges all day long. I'm going to sit here and eat my potato chips. <laughs> That's what I think. All right. Well, uh, and I still look good. Have you, what about, what about men? How do they react to you? Uh, in... They love me. What I told you. What, what do you think they could do without all this meat? <laughs> A man needs some meat, honey. They need meat. Skin and bone. What, what is a man going to do with skin and bones? They can't do much with skin and bones, honey. They need some meat to grab on. No, we oh. got muscles, baby. Yeah. Muscles. We're tall. Right Who's where it is? Who's where it is? Oh, yeah. Who's where it is? Now, see, I thought it was won't there. It is. I didn't think it was where it is. Later in the show, Richard put Wanda's meaty physique to the test. He had her wrestle Jackie. Holy smokes! A five-three, one hundred-pound fitness freak. Wanda trying to get her into the head slam. She escapes, and now. Oh, this just goes on and on and on. Tuesday show, some of Richard's guests will be hitting on their best friends when platonic friendships turn into something more. Tuesday. Well, I want you to check out this next highlight right now. I can't really do much of a setup for her. It comes from the Montel Williams show. He was doing a special series of shows, and wouldn't he have been remiss to not invite on the Dallas Cowboy cheerleaders? Here they are in all their splendor and glory. Cowboys. All right. Montel will be playing Santa on Friday's show. He'll be granting Christmas wishes Jeez. for kids of all ages. Set the party pooper. Okay, we got a uh, talk soup letter for you here right now. Yeah, how about this? Sean in Lockport, Illinois writes us uh, a very nice letter saying he watches the show regularly and asks, Greg, is there ever a time when you just lose it, go crazy, can't take it anymore? And, Sean, that's a question I get asked regularly, and quite frankly, there was a time, it was about six months ago, when I just really had a hard time oh, getting through it. Yeah, thank you, right on. This is another fresh edition of the award-winning Talk Soup, Greg Kennard back. <laughs> Greg Kennard. Greg Kinnard. Kinnear? Kinnear. <laughs> 19. Spoon me like you know me. It's Doc Soup. We're back. As a kid, he was a cute little carrot top smart alike on the Partridge family. As an adult, he's gone through several incarnations, most of them very well documented by the masters of daytime talk. His name is Danny Bonaducci. 
You know him as an ex-child star who definitely has had some uh, hard times, but seems to have come through. This week on the Montel Williams Show, Bonaducci did some verbal sparring with an author, quite a guy, by the name of Joseph Bauer. What do you think? You've been listening to this. I mean, you know, well, you the are first the thing, The first thing I think is you are the bitterest man I ever met. I'm the, uh, um, I'm the most, honest, I'm the most well, honest man you've ever let, met. Let me tell you that, that I disagree with that. On page 138 of your book, you say that David Bustino called you up one day and said he didn't feel like doing schoolwork, and your reply was good, I don't feel like teaching. Doesn't that make you a desperate failure at your job? Well, you know, if you could the, read past the third grade level... You would see that I didn't say that. Well, I think what's rooted is you're passing yourself off as some kind of a role model to the studio audience no, and millions not. of people. You are a pathetic, no-life sham, a drug abuser. You have a criminal past. You come out here tap dancing and passing yourself off as an example. I've been out here Shame 10 on you. seconds. No, well, <laughs> but look at the damage you've done. Well, I'll tell you what, well, you know, what? I, you know I, I got to jump I I, 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 real I, quick. Before you, I'll let you jump in, but you know, part of what he's done is what a lot of people have done in America, and a lot of people are doing it for some good. You know, for whatever problems he had in his life as he was growing up. Every step along the way, you have been an open book. Yes, sir. I can remember reading every time... There was no fear in coming here right. with this guy that he's going to expose me. You know. I, I was in a fist fight with a transvestite, had a terrible drug problem. There you go. If the guy had worn a dress, Danny would have kicked his butt. By the way, this is actually no lie. This Wednesday, Danny talked one of his radio listeners. He does a show out in Chicago, um, and he talked one of his listeners out of committing suicide. On the air, he kept the guy talking for three and a half hours, apparently, on the radio until the police arrived and uh, saved him. This Wednesday on Montel Show, meet some teenage kids who are bringing concealed weapons to class. Is there anything teachers can do to stop what has become a frightening and alarming trend? Randy Allen certainly doesn't have Betty Davis eyes. As for his makeup job, that looks like something straight out of the Hollywood Wax Museum. Allen is a female impersonator who imitates the outspoken Oscar winner in his one-man show, P.S. Betty Davis. That's right, the P.S. stands for Post Stroke. His highlight from the Jane Whitney show is just a glimpse of him in character. Take a look. I really would like to be remembered for Doc Victory. Yes. <laughs> It is still one of my favorite films, even though Ronald Reagan was in it. <laughs> but he doesn't remember. Little Ronnie Reagan. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't remember anything. Well, well, Ronald Reagan, fun to work with? Well, he played a drunk in the film. No, he was very professional. We always called him Little Ronnie Reagan. He wasn't a very good actor, though, you know. Just Little Ronnie Reagan. <laughs> Well, just, oh, somebody's, wait a minute, somebody uh -oh. just stood right up without a mic back here. You got a heckler, I think, Miss Davis. What is this about? What? Uh, yeah, just a moment. Both Nancy and I have come all the way out from Los Angeles for this. <laughs> and I, no, I, yeah. I won't hear of it. And, uh, although I had some fun with you at one time on the old MGM lot, why, those days are gone. And with that, <laughs> Did you wore a hairpiece, Mr. <laughs> I think my fever is like massively compounded and I'm hallucinating now. Was that for real that I just... Mm -hmm. Kind of a strange, creepy-looking fella called Betty Davis and... Yeah. Hey, this Wednesday, Jane looks into the issue of consensual sex versus rape, condom rape or consensual sex. That'll be Wednesday, Jane Whitney. Hey, girls, why not get Mom a great big bankruptcy for Christmas? It's the gift that just keeps on giving. All it takes is a couple of major credit cards, a greedy streak. If you need some pointers, watch this next highlight from the Jenny Jones Show. You're about to meet uh, Jennifer and her broke but very happy mom, Maria. Watch. What's the most you ever spent in one day? In one day, six hundred. No. <laughs> no. Oh, no. Three thousand dollars. Three thousand dollars in one day. <laughs> Three on what? On what? Clothes. Clothes. It just it was a brand new mall they just opened and we just went in there and I we didn't just went know, in there to look and I didn't know the lady. The lady just we were just looking and the lady say, um, would you, are you interested in any clothes? I said, no, no, we just look and we don't have any money. 
And I don't know, the lady was just, you she could said, take anything. She gave us shopping bag and she said, put anything you want in the bag. And we'll and put then, it to your credit. And then, and then we'll put it to your credit. You have a good job and I'll, you know, I know where you work and, I'll, and you pay every week. We took all the clothes on. All the clothes was hers. Most of the clothes. Aren't you a single mother? Yes, I am. And you, you're working for a living. And do you work, uh, mm -hmm. Jennifer? Where? She works. McDonald's. <laughs> She could be using some of her mother's money for psychiatric help because she really needs a psychiatric help, you know? Psychiatric. Psychiatric help. Try it again, psychiatric. She could be using some of her mother's money for psychiatric help. Yeah, one more. One more you got. Okay. She could be using some of her mother's money for psychiatric help. And our guest response for the for the week there. Marie only makes $27,000 a year. She's a single mom. On this Wednesday show, get to know a man who's romantically involved with his mother and daughter roommates. This on Wednesday. Don't tune out now. Coming up, we're about to meet a bisexual swinger with a very understanding husband, and we'll check out a, oh goody, a cross-dressing fashion show. Next. Now we have from Los Angeles, California, Hollywood, the Chanel twins, entrepreneurs of their own right, night clubbing, party givers. We have Linda Evangelipstick and Christy Girlington. I'm Greg Kinnear. A pathetic, no-life sham. Well, okay, you can put it that way. To keep their sex life from getting too confusing, Pam and Joe have penned their own open marriage rule book, so to speak. Page one reads, Pam can sleep with as many women as she wants, but no men. Joe cannot sleep with other men or other women, unless, of course, Pam seduces them first. In that case, Joe can only do certain things in certain cases with certain people. Swinging ain't what it used to be, is it? For further details, here's Montel Williams. It was 20 till last night. And no. then it turned to 21. 21. Wait, 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 wait. <laughs> It just happened. Wait, we flew you in here, and yeah. you're here in Dallas, and all of a sudden it became 21? Yes. Yeah, so we were sitting at the bar, conversation happened, and the next thing you know, they were up in the room. I met a very attractive woman last night. We had a lot in common. We started to talk. A lot in she was beautiful, sensitive, and the topic came up about women being with women, and one thing led to another, and um, we both wound up together, the other female and myself. I what, am bisexual. What happened to you? Where were you? I was in the bar with the other girl's boyfriend. Having some drinks. <laughs> what? Wait, you were just in the bar with the boyfriend having drinks? Yeah. The two of the fellas are standing there watching TV while your girl, your wife and his girlfriend are upstairs. Montel, um, what I would like to say is that my husband and I have a very open, honest relationship. It's he is way my... open, isn't it? <laughs> I believe cavernous is the word we may be looking for for Montel. Lies with mistresses. On Thursday's show, Montel will be bringing estranged family members together. He's hoping they'll get into that Christmas spirit and forgive each other for past transgressions. Will it happen? You'll find out Thursday. Well, Brian's sexual favors are quite unusual. The topic at hand you're about to see right now is a three-way love affair involving a gentleman by the name of Brian, who you will see here momentarily, his wife Sarah, and his mistress Christine. On this edition of Jenny Jones, Christine explains how she and Brian first got together. He was a proper gentleman, no lie, I swear he was, and my kids are watching, they'll back me up. Um, they, he, he was a proper gentleman, and I woke up in the morning, and I found a note beside my bed saying that not all men are out to screw me. And he, uh, I, I went out to the kitchen and I went to make tea and I heard the knock on the door and it was him and the car wouldn't start so he came in and I went and warmed him up. It took me three days to get the frosted out of his fingers. <laughs> and three days later, the car was fixed and he left. So he's gone for three days, and you found out he was with another woman. What did you say to him? I don't remember exactly. I'm sure there's probably a lot of obscenities. <laughs> I, I know at that point I threatened to leave. Um, it, was, it was a bad situation. I, like I said, I did a lot of screaming. Yeah. Okay, guys, this is not Three's company. He is starting a brothel here. 
and he is loving it. Aren't you too worried, Sarah and Christine, that he's going to get a girl out in the garage and you're going to have to split eight hours a day? Are you not worried about this? I don't seem to have a problem with it. Grizzly Adams there and his two lady loves live in apparently the same duplex. Sarah lives upstairs, Christine is downstairs, and he has cut a door between the two floors so he can slip back and forth on the grizzly pole to take care of business. On Thursday's show, Jenny hears from a woman who was upset because her best friend snubbed her when it came time to pick a maid of honor for her wedding. Man, is she steamed. Thursday. How's this for a bizarre marketing ploy? Dressing men up like women to sell clothes to women who want to attract men. Eh, who cares? It doesn't make a lot of sense. It's the biggest craze in Gay Paris, so it must be cool, right? As you might expect, Jerry Springer is right on top of this cutting-edge trend, and they did a whole, whole fashion show for you. And now we have, from Los Angeles, California, Hollywood, the Chanel twins, entrepreneurs of their own right, nightclubbing, party givers. We have Linda Evangel Lipstick and Christy Girlington with original Chanel accessories and the designer of these wonderful outfits, Anthony Franco. Thank you, Chanel twins. Remember, these men are modeling as women. Now we have Tina modeling a black palazzo hat suit made of round jersey and viscosa with a little turling coat made of eyelash hair with also Chanel accessories. Thank you, Tina. Then we have Miss TJ Mozzarella modeling a little swimsuit number. Soon, I think, Miss TJ will be, will be walking on the runways of Paris with this attitude. Thank you, TJ Mozzarella. TJ Mozzarella? I guess somehow the cheese reference seems appropriate there, right? Those are all guys. And we do, ladies and gentlemen, have a possible body double with Joey the Crossdresser and Colonel Click. We got a match on this Thursday show. Oh, brother. Oh, brother, do I want to be a brother. Meet the blackest white boy since Vanilla Ice. This will be Thursday. Jerry. Well, we're going to take a quick break right now when we return a story that will make your eyes water. Plus, Mo sings the praises of menopause. Next. Aiming for excellence and consistently missing the mark, this is Talk Soup, the weekend edition. She's back. Like it or not, Tammy Faye Baker is here to stay while her ex-husband Jimmy is doing time for extorting millions. Tammy Faye is free as a bird, as it turns out. In fact, she was a recent guest on the Jerry Springer Show. Here is what she had to say. Hi, Tammy. Hi, hi. I have been listening to you, and you have been saying, we, 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 we built this, we did that, uh -huh. and we did this. Uh-huh. Well, why is it that Jim is spending his time in prison and you are not? I don't know. I mean, I, all I did was sing. I yeah. sang... Uh, the only thing I did was sing. I guess they don't yeah. put you in prison for singing. I had nothing to do at all with the running of the ministry. Did you not spend the money also? No, the Jim Banker no. I, people? I did not spend any... I, well, I mean, what I had my... What supported you? What bought Honey, your jewelry I had, and your I had purse? my paycheck. I had my no. paycheck, but that's all I spent was my paycheck. A lot of us raised children on our own. I did, too. Without all the things you've had, honey, and I've, we did it all legally. I've experienced legally. that, too. I, when Jim went to prison, I ended up with $1,000. That was all we had, and you can believe that or not. And I, ra and I got myself back to work again, and I took care of my son by myself. There you have it. That is Tammy Faye Baker on the Jerry Springer Show. And as a matter of fact, we thought we'd just try out this new 900 number thing she has here. Sarah, can you call my mom in Syracuse? Yeah. She's in Lackawanna, first of all, Tom. And we're not making free phone calls here. <laughs> See all the beverages? I have a cold. <laughs> Liquids, that's what they tell you. Tammy Faye number here. Yeah, this goes.
new message every week. God bless you for calling. Oh. And what do you know about that? That's kind of fun. On this Friday show, Jerry will present an inspirational Christmas special. He'll get into the holiday spirit with the help of the Chicago Inner City Youth Choir. She's in Lackawanna, silly. All I can say about this next clip is that it's about time. One subject you just can't hear too much about. That's right, folks. It's menopause, also known as the change of life. Mo Gaffney delves into it right now. Who else would devote an entire show to this topic and even compose a little song in its honor? And a one, and a two, and a three. Yes, for you see, sisters, menopause will set you free. Free at last. Free at last. Good goddess almighty, we are free at last. Coming up on the next Mo Show, tune in. Mo introduces her family to the rest of the world, meet her drug-addicted sister, and her mom who's a recovering alcoholic. This will be Friday. That's what it says. That first day at work is always a little harrowing, isn't it? I mean, you're a little nervous. You got the, the fever. Ooh, the fever. The fever running through you. You're worried. You're going to do something wrong or somehow make a bad impression on the person you'll be working for for the upcoming years. That's what Kim Silva was going through the first time that she met her current employer, who happens to be Tom Arnold. Here she is describing an incident that occurred in Tom's kitchen. As Vicki Lawrence points out, it was a real icebreaker. Do you have a, a, a most embarrassing moment to, with uh, Tom? I do. Um, <laughs> It was my first day um, as his assistant. Now, how long have you been his assistant? About 10 months. I thought you were going to say 10 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. No. <laughs> um, anyway, um, we were going Christmas shopping, and I hadn't really been in his presence much, and we were sitting at the kitchen table, and we were just waiting to go. We were eating breakfast, and I was starving, but I hadn't eaten anything, you know, in the morning because I was so nervous about being with him. He has all the energy. and. Um, so I'm just sitting there, and all of a sudden, my stomach growled so loud, and I thought, I really hope he didn't hear that, because God knows what he's going to think. And he says, did you fart? <laughs> and I was, I was horrified. I thought, no, I didn't fart. It was my first day. Well, way to break the ice, though. <laughs> that is the highlight of Vicky there. That is Kim, who is Tom Arnold's assistant. And I can tell you from experience that Tom can be a little difficult. I remember he and Roseanne were pitching me some cockamamie show they wanted me to carry on Talk Soup a while back. It just, it's just kind of a weird... The thing you two need to understand is we are very selective on Talk Soup. I mean, we carry 24 different shows. Now, you seem like nice people, but do you have any television experience? Yes, yes, we do. I was on Evening at the Improv. Oh, well, well, I did this uh, George Slaughter special. And we were time. almost both on a Slim Fast uh, commercial. Yeah, almost. We're just 40 pounds away. Yeah. What's the show? Starts off 7 in the morning, cameras start in our bedroom. We aren't even awake, we're no matter what awake. we're doing. No makeup, nothing. Nothing. Oh, not Fam. for all. Camera starts. Come it's... in, film us, right, waking up. Our whole day, day. whatever we do, whoever we talk to. The guests come right into the bedroom. Transvestites in the yeah. bedroom. Uh, stripping contest, ugly things, uh, families that hate each other, re reunited families, we aliens? get them together. Aliens, we, you know what? Get them. We're, we're going to have the actual alien, people who have had sex with aliens and liked it. <laughs> you know, I like you two. What, what's the name of the show? A Full Day with the Arnold. All Day with the Arnold. All Day with the Arnold. That's what we're going to call it. Okay, all right. I don't see it. He doesn't see it, doesn't honey. See it. Get him, honey. Okay. What? What? Hey. Whoa! Hey, easy now. Whoa, easy. All right, here we go. We're walking. Get out of here. Uh -oh. You 
guys. It's not that bad of an idea. All day is a good day with the Arnolds. Tom, Rosie. 1993. It's the effervescent weekly wrap-up show, checking out all the highlights from the previous week, the ones that really move and shake daytime television brought together for you. This is uh, one last clip we have for you today. Here's something, incidentally, you won't see on NYPD Blue. Bob Geary is a cop who, he doesn't play by the rules, my friends. This San Francisco man in blue follows his instincts on the streets. Sometimes that means tracking down dangerous criminals and... Sometimes it means lugging around his two-foot wooden partner, Brendan O'Smarty. He carries around one of these uh, little mannequin guys. <laughs> I'm serious. He was the guest on the Jerry Springer Show. Ladies and gentlemen, I am so happy to report that this is the Talk Soup Clip of the Week. I don't know how you expect people to take you seriously, because I personally find it quite funny. I mean, I would be amused if I saw him on the street. I, I, I probably wouldn't be able to take you seriously. That's right, and, and if you're an angry person, and you didn't take me seriously, and you thought it was funny, I've disarmed you, and I've had a positive connection with somebody that may not feel very good about the police department. Gang, a, a gang banger will see that as a weakness, not as a strength. I'm telling you, that's reality. Has anybody, has anybody taken that puppet and shoved it where the sun doesn't shine? No. No, no I, I mean, know. no one's re really, you've never had a case where someone really got angry? No, because what I've done is if I felt that, they, they, that I was intrusive with, with my behavior with the puppet as a police officer, you would back away. Because as having a puppet uh, with me is that I'm judged more closely than, let's say, an officer who would not have a puppet. And, and if you just kind of shy the person off, they'll say, who does he think he is? He's got the puppet and he's just out there for a show. What I'm doing is I'm trying to add humor to the job. And, and I have a right to let's do go, that. Go, go. Let's, go, let's all go in in clown uniforms. You'll change your shirt for a pink neon yeah. shirt. And that's funny. People will laugh at you. I think I mean, be, that's funny. You would be successful okay. as a clown, but I think Brent and I would be happy as a puppet. Uh, please don't you can say that. You can say what we want. We need, we need smart people in our cars, not dummies. Yeah, you laugh, but Brendan O'Smarty the dummy has actually apprehended over 25,000 criminals and solved over 1,000 homicides to date. In Bizarro World! In Bizarro World, he did. As the show progressed, Jerry put things into perspective with this statement. An airline pilot as a human being, too, but I'd get a little nervous if the airline pilot walked in there with a couple of puppets flying the plane. Mm-hmm. As fate would have it, Brendan O'Smarty recently earned his commercial aviator swings. Wednesday on Jerry's show, meet women who took their clothes off for common con men posing as playboy photographers. Smile and say cheesy, this will all take place Wednesday. All last week, we were telling you that Perrin's cast was finally coming on. Get out of here, Perrin. We're taking it off. Come on. Come on. Come on. Two more weeks. It really needs two, two more weeks. Come on. I'll be, I'll be gentle. Are you sure? Yeah. Come on. Here we go. Perrin's cast finally coming off. That does feel great. Get out of here, you knucklehead. That's it for the show. We'll see you back here Monday. Coming up next... It's E! News Week in Review. Hit the theme. Thank you. With all the best stories from the past week's entertainment news, don't go away. It's coming up next.